you know when you just you know when you sing around, sing around, and me so I'm not sure what it is, what it is, man. You know exactly. Eddie Wright and you know it's E Vapors. I know you've been waiting on me, and I'm here. <laughs> there you have it. Like we say every week, you can be anywhere in the world, but you choose to be with us. Definitely hit up the website that is thescoretalk.com, www.thescoretalk.com. Also reach us on Facebook at The Score with Eddie Wright or The Score with E. Vapors or Sean Wells. You can find us. We're looking for 5,000 more. Let's go. We almost reached our goal of 10,000 Facebook fans for 2011. No doubt. That's what it is, man. And where can they find the best, funniest, most entertaining show on the web they can go anytime to unless you're driving to www.evaporsshow.com that's e-v-a-p-o-r-s show.com where you're gonna get ramped up you're gonna get rowdy and you're gonna get ready for sports comedy and entertainment come on now there you have it there you have it lots to talk about today uh again if you listen to us, you know our new time is 10 in the morning. Oh. We start off the Saturday lineup. We're batting first. Yes, sir. We're going to get a hit. Yes, sir. Round the bases. Yes, sir. We're bringing on home. Ricky Henderson style with a bunch of <laughs> arrogance. <laughs> a bunch of arrogance. A whole bunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, lots to talk about. Herman Cain and hot water. We will talk about Ooh, that. Wee. And where does that go? That situation go from here? The jobless rate goes down in October. More good news on the economic front. The G20 summit, the president is over in France. Okay. Talking all things economy, world economy, mm -hmm. and how things in Europe, especially Greece and Italy, will affect your purse strings riding around Raleigh. Okay, I need to know how what's going on over there affects here. That's interesting. Yeah, definitely. NBA lockout could last even longer. And if it's up to some of these guys, they wouldn't play at all. Oh, my goodness. You know, Keith Sweat said uh, make it last forever. But make I don't think it applies. Ever, okay. So. Keith Sweat said it. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we hope that doesn't apply in this particular situation. Uh, the big game. Today, 1230 at Carter Finley Stadium. Oh. Some people call it the Mecca. Some people call it many other things but we'll go with Mecca since we're in Raleigh. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go with the Mecca. State 4-4 four four faces Carolina at 5-3 and three, uh, or 6-3 and three, rather. Carolina's already bowl eligible. State is trying to get there. They have to win three out of the last four games. This could be one of them. I'll tell you what. They got three games at home. So right. Lots to talk about. The the coaches have been doing a little chirping back and forth. Ooh, I love it. Love it. I, I do too. Yes, because sir. Because it makes it relevant. Yes, sir. Again, this yes, is sir. a huge robbery, especially when it comes to the football side of things. And NC State has dominated the robbery the last four years, taking it home. And I, I'll never forget when this whole situation started, this streak of four in a row. Right. When I went over to Carolina – Came straight from the studio. I got there in the second quarter over in a cold, windy day over in Chapel Hill. Oof. I walked in the stadium. We were up 21. That's three. We. Yeah, we as an NC State. Okay. No, I was just checking. Yeah, I, didn't know, I didn't know if you left from here and went to the bench. and, and you know, No, no. I should have played. Yeah, you, you probably could have. Yeah, because we ended up winning 41 to 10. Oh, you could have got in. You could have yeah, messed no it up. No question. No question. So, we got a lot to talk about there. Of course, there is a huge game, one versus two, LSU, Alabama. We're going to talk about that and how much the tickets are going for. Oh, okay. I hadn't even heard any oh, um, ticket prices goodness. at all, but um, you got me interested. I need to know exactly Ooh, what's going on. You could, like they say in the streets, you can come up, bro. Okay. You could come up. I wish I had you one. You had then. one of those tickets. Oh, my. I want to hear that. State basketball, another great Week. Oh, getting <laughs> nervous around Godfrey. here. Getting tight. <laughs> Mark Godfrey is making some noise when it comes to recruiting. We'll tell you who he signed and why 
Rivals is ranking this class in the top 10 for 2012. Not mad at all. Mm. Do mm. your thing, NC State. I'm giddy. I'm giddy. NFL news. Can Romo get his mojo back? I say no. We'll talk about that. Oh, my. Are the San Francisco 49ers for real? If the playoffs were to start today, today they would have a bye for the first round. But they don't start today, <laughs> and collapse is possible. Oh wow! So I, I would, you know, hold my um, purchase of my t-shirts and fat heads for the wall. Okay, okay. You, know, you might want to pump your brakes on that. Okay, wow, wow. Yeah, um, pump those brakes. Of course, we're gonna get some picks in. Um, and matter of fact, we should start just a pick segment, and right. we'll keep a tally. And at the end of the year, mm -hmm. whoever wins. The other one has to bring a case of Gatorade. No doubt. Now, you know, as you know, on the eVapor show, we have a segment called Prom Night Picks. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we pick four games each week, three Sunday games. And then, of course, we pick the Monday night game as well. And we call it Prom Night Picks. And we, we don't mind carrying over Prom Night Picks to the score. Just like we have where they do that at, and of course, this or that. So we'll, we'll do that and we'll keep a running tally so I can get my great. Gatorade, the hand delivered. You know what I'm saying? And, like if, and if you're watching this on on the tube, you see that I have my great Gatorade in hand and Gatorade. I want some money. For no the doubt. Show. No doubt. Uh, speaking of where they do that at, in this or that, that segment will be coming up a little bit later. And of course, the quick hits. Uh, a community left in the dark. I tell you what, these austerity measures are crazy, especially. Mm. Uh, in some of these cities that need money and need money bad. NBA, now the fourth most attended sport, which is totally bogus. We'll talk about that. Right. And a daughter re reveals a video of her father beating her down. Okay, I don't know. Down. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't met a loss of words, really. But uh, it was, <laughs> I'll say this. It was the part, they didn't even show, like, the whole video. Yeah, it's like um, eight they, minutes long. Right. They just, you know, chopped it up a little bit. And they said, you know, you don't want to see the whole thing. You know, it's uh, something serious. Yeah, no doubt. So no just doubt. on the few minutes that I saw, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, you're locked into the score of Power 750 WAUG with E Vapors and Eddie Wright. Uh, don't forget to hit up the website that is thescoretalk.com, www.thescoretalk.com. And you know, you can catch me at evaporshow.com, E V A P O R S show.com. Sports, comedy, entertainment. You need to get there. Don't meet me there, beat me there. Where else would you want to be at on a Saturday morning other than right here? Nowhere. At the Power 750. There you have W-A-U-G. Where else would you want to be? Nowhere. That's I don't why, that's, that's why, why I'm here. here. That's, yeah. why, that's why I'm here too. <laughs> Herman Cain in hot water amid allegations of sexual harassment by three women. And you know what they say about sexual harassment. What they say? If it's three mil three women this week, it'll be six women next week. And that, so on uh -huh. and so on and so on. That rule came along a little bit after Tiger Woods. Mm. Right, because once, you know, one came, then the second and the third and yeah, no, it was a whole laundry list, and we won't go there. Yeah, that's been a little while back, but uh, I'm kind of interested to see how this is going to play out with, with Mr. Mr. Kane. Yeah, and if unless you've been living under the rock, these women worked with Herman Kane in the mid 1990s while he was the head of the National Restaurant Association, the NRA. The NRA. Yeah, when they say that, you you like what National <laughs> Rifle Association? I didn't know he was part of that. Good. Well, no, I'm saying I didn't when I heard NRA. I, I was thinking, you I know, see him part of the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Nah, he he probably would be a little hesitant to pick up arms. He didn't pick him up back in the day. <laughs> he was scared. He was nervous. <laughs> That's not scared. Scared. <laughs> um, he was confronted with this story two weeks ago by a political reporter. Kane is his Kane and his campaign said. Ooh, say, that, say that again. Kane and his campaign. That's, that's some 16 bars right there. Kane right. and his campaign. I need to. We, you they need scared to, a, to go to Maine. We need to do a cipher. No doubt. Yeah, we need to. We need to do a cipher, and that'll go viral. No doubt. Immediately. The Kane cipher. Uh, once the story broke on Sunday, after the campaign knowing about the allegations of harassment, Kane changed the story multiple times. Slowly, during the day, he revealed more details each and every time. 
the guy initially was like, I, I don't remember anything. No. Didn't do it? Yeah, I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Then the second time, well, well, I, I uh, can't remember our, uh, but something happened. You know, now that you <laughs> now that you mentioned that. It's like, it's like when you're talking to a child and they lie to you the first time. Right. And then you say, are you telling the truth? Well, Pops, um, uh, yeah, that, he's kind of on the, the second level of revealing the truth. No question. Uh, and the women had to settle. Some received severance, pa severance packages and had to, had to sign a hush clause. So they can't really <laughs> even say anything about it, about the situation. So, I mean, it is gaining legs, it's gaining traction. Uh, but really, it's helping this campaign, believe it or not, because right. after the allegations came out on Sunday, this past week, Herman Cain and his campaign has raised over one million dollars from the support from his supporters. You, you know, in, in advertising and marketing, and I've worked in that extensively. Uh, sometimes uh, any news is good news because yeah. your name or your brand is being talked about constantly, consistently, and. That's a good thing. Mm, it makes you relevant. It, it does. It does. Considering that they were considering him not relevant. But in the words of Mr. Kane, this came from another camp. Yeah. So they exactly. must be taking him serious. And, you know, he's been the front runner now for about three weeks. And those that listen to the school on a regular basis, I made an, an example of how the Clintons took that approach with the Obama campaign. Didn't take him serious. He's a young guy. He doesn't have name recognition at home. Didn't really pay him any attention. Turned around, Mr. Obama's raised millions of dollars in a matter of weeks on the internet. No question. And at that point, the train had already left the station and the rest is history. No question about it. So where does he go from here? He's raised a million dollars. Now, the campaign has leaked this out. They said if it goes, if he does not get the nomination in the GOP presidential um, race and things start to go sideways, then he may go as a run as a third party candidate, which that would help the president so much. <laughs> just like when crazy Ross Perot oh, ran in 1996. It. Yes. Changed the whole dynamic. Uh, or at 92, changed the whole dynamic, and Clinton was ushered in. Same thing with President Obama. That will split the Republican vote, and it will be great news. So be looking for that, because that could potentially be what happens moving forward. Jobless rate goes down in October. The unemployment rate goes from 9.1 to 9%. That doesn't sound like an awful lot. Um, it's not a notice noticeable difference. Well, it's 80,000 more people. Working. Right. Is someone trying to take credit for this? All I'm saying is. <laughs> nah, I'm, just, I'm just asking. It, it, I mean, I, were these numbers put out? Had the numbers been in reverse, would they have been so eloquently quoted over the course, radio of waves? Of course. Uh, no, no question about it. Because hmm. it, it, now I am a homer and I know okay. where you're going with that. Uh, all right. And I'll admit to it mm -hmm. on air publicly. Right. Yes. But. The president has taken hits from all sides. Republicans, even some Democrats, are hitting the president and talking about his jobs bill is not going to create jobs. They had to vote on it and they have to pass it before it really goes into effect. But some of his prior policies are starting to gain a little bit of traction. And the reason I say that, the numbers bear that out. And since May of 2010, the private sector has added 2.28 million jobs. And when they say, oh, there's nothing but the government get bigger. Right. How about this? The government, during that same time span, has cut 1 million jobs. Interesting. I, I, I don't think it's ever a win-win situation when I hear these numbers come out. You're going to have people that are 100% against what the president is doing. He could have created 10 million new jobs. And I'm sure there would be someone oh, no on the other side of the aisle that would have something to say about it. I'm almost at a point now to where I'm, I'm just at a loss for words when I hear these numbers come out. Because I already know what's going to be on the other side of it. There's going to be another side complaining. And it's almost like if you have the solution on the other side, 
why don't you give the current administration the answer? Oh, I know what. You're holding that for your campaign so you can be elected on these particular numbers. So in so many words, you want to see the president fail. No question. And he, and they said that. They right. said that publicly. Rush Limbaugh said he wanted the president to fail. Mitch McConnell, the minority leader in the Senate, said his number one focus is making sure that President Obama is a one-term president. So what you're saying is totally correct, but one assumption that you made that they, the other side of the Republicans, and you're locked into the school of Power 750, we're talking the economy, we're talking jobless, uh, the unemployment rates. But the assumption that you're making is that they have answers. Well, the answers that they have didn't work during the George W. Bush administration. That's why we're in this mess to begin with. I see, I look at the glass half full. I'm an optimist and I see that we are moving in the right direction when it comes to the economy. Very, very slowly, we are creeping there. Yes, sir. But just like the tortoise and the hare, yes, sir. sometimes the race is not given to the swift, but those who what? Endure. Into the end. There you have it. G20 Summit in France. The president, speaking of the president, he is with the uh, 20 leading economies in the world. They are talking about the world economy. And like I was, uh, I teased it earlier, how it affects you driving around Raleigh, driving around Durham, Chapel Hill. Yeah, I'm Triangle glad you said Durham. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, Bull City. No doubt, Bull Much City. Love. Stand up. <laughs> um, but how does it affect you? You know, right now they're, they're discussing Greece. Uh, we, we mentioned Grease the country or grease like go in your hair or grease that you cook with? <laughs> the grease the country okay. that has really not been relevant for 2,000 years right. but is the most important country in the world right now simply right. because of the effect economically it's had on Europe mm -hmm. and here in the United States because they are about to reach default where they can't pay their debts at all. The banks They've already passed, the European Union has already passed a measure where the banks, the, uh, the, the, the banks that were owed money by Greece have to take a 50% cut. Oh. And they're going to try to bail them out with $78 billion. Now, the, the United States said unequivocally that they are not giving that, that money is not going to come from the U.S. Treasury. That's going to come from the European Union, European countries. But they have affected uh, a lot of what you see now going on with the, the market, the ebbs and flows. Right. If you have a 401k riding around, you see it dipping a little bit when you look at your quarterly, um, your quarterly statements. So right. it has a ripple effect all across the world. They're dealing with also China. China is manipulating their currency when they... When you export something into their, into their... At one price. At one price, and it's coming back at a higher price right. when you have to pay for it. Right. How so, convenient. Exactly. So, um, he's also dealing with that. So, to be continued, I think coming out of this, the uh, they're going to get rid of the, the prime minister in Greece. Um, and I think that they're going to bail Greece out and make sure that they don't go into default and make things even worse for the for Europe as well as the United States. Yeah, I, I mean, I have the utmost confidence in our world economic system. And like you said, go in, take out who's in charge. Now, obviously they didn't know what they were doing. Restructure the whole deal and the world will be fine. And they can go along and have their French fries and sing songs at the top of the Eiffel Tower since they're in France. In, well, I'm sorry, they're in Cannes, France. They're not in Paris. Yeah. So uh, maybe they can catch, they can stay in town until the film festival comes around in July <laughs> or something. Something beautiful, like that. Beautiful place. I've been to Cannes, France really? uh, quite a few times. Okay. I actually was there uh, one Christmas mm -hmm. um, in Cannes, France, and it was a, a, a very, I had a very good time there. Uh, beautiful people, mm -hmm. very receptive, you know, to tourism, mm -hmm. and I, mean, I had a great time. Well, the, you know, you know, my question always mm -hmm. for folks when in, I've traveled the world not as extensively as you have but i asked this question how do they treat brothers over there they love us there <laughs> we're, we're we're like uh nba players okay, okay. Yeah, yeah we're like nba players Ooh. in the united states you know yes we're the cream of the crop mm. we get much respect 
over in France. Parlez-vous français to my friends back home in France. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it. Uh, we're about to go up. We're up against a hard break. When we come out of break, we're going to talk NBA lockout, where that goes, State Carolina football game, oh. quick hits, this or that, where they do that at. Yes. Uh, just a full slate. You locked into the score. Power 750 W A U G. I'm three, even 